Well, I loved my old bass, my, uh, the original. It's a nice, slim body, so it doesn't add a lot of weight. I love the wood combination, so it's got a nice, slim neck. And that's important to me because of the kind of player that I am. The new production model, it was able to capture all those things, you know. This process has taught me so much. Um, not only do I have my dream bass, but I've, I've now learned so much more about what goes into making this bass sound and feel so good. I wanna, that's how I play. Is it okay? Do I have the job? <laughs> ah, this one is shifted over. Yeah, that's cool. It's in. So different materials. So Nick goes down. Yeah. For the shape too. This is round. Can you make it flat? <laughs> he said that's easy. When they had to decide on a color, I asked Mace, I said, do you have a jar of honey in your house? He said, yeah. I want it to be the color of honey. If having one truss rod has all of the advantages you, you just mentioned, but enable us to get the neck a little thinner, that would be great. Yeah. Actually, this uh, thickness is the same as the uh, gem guitar. As the gem guitar? Yeah. <laughs> My goal is to retire this one. Uh, yeah, that's how. I don't know if you can do it. That's how good I want it to be. Oh yeah. It's beautiful. Like honey. Like honey. A honey base. Yeah. It's, it's killer. The enhancements of this base over the original model are mostly sonic, but there are also some um, hardware uh, improvements. Sonically, this bass is more versatile. Uh, one thing that I always struggled with was getting more lows out of my original model. They both have custom wound Bartolini pickups, great pickups. But I chase the electronics and use the Aguilar preamp. And then we have uh, a mid-range EQ. It's got two set points, one at 400 and the other one at 800. Very useful frequencies for bass. As far as the hardware is concerned, some cool, cool improvements. I love these tuners. Goto tuners, much tighter, better feel. I love this bridge. I'm finding out more about this bridge as we go, this monorail bridge, because each individual saddle is a separate piece in terms, instead of being uh, all the strings attached to one bridge plate, you get fewer sympathetic vibrations. Because I was noticing when I was playing earlier that the bass sounds clearer. You know, and with six strings, six string basses, that's really an issue. In terms of the wood, most of the body is alder. But on the top is this beautiful flame maple. What maple does, it's, it helps the attack. And of course, it looks killer. We've got that nice wingy stripe in the back. You combine that with a bigger headstock. And I'm noticing more sustain in my original bass, which was really important to me. I always wanted to have a, a bass that, um, for the type of melodic playing that I do, playing melodies and playing solos, to have a bass that really sings, you know, when you, when you hold a note and sustain it. Bass is jealous now because you know it's <laughs> just sitting there. I, I like to play with my fingers fairly curved because that's the best sound, and I like to maintain that relationship of my curved fingers to the strings up and down the neck. The best way to do that is to have a thinner neck. So I'm so impressed with that. The cool thing about both these basses is that I use a narrower string spacing which is important to me because most, most six-string players that I know, at some point, they want to play chords. Why? Because it sounds good. 
you know, and that's one of the cool things about having a six string bass. Well, when the, when the strings are fairly close, or closer, it makes it much easier to, to play chords in a way that's not cumbersome and to change from chord to chord in a way that's not cumbersome. I'm so happy. That's a keeper.